Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope y'all can see me. Shit, I ain't got but one of the lights on. But anyway, uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm your mistress of ceremony, Lady Nika, in with tonight's episode and return of the have and have nots. Bitch, was it not good? Girl, was it not good? Girl, it was good tonight. It was good. It's only going to get better. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about what happened tonight. Um, the title of the episode is Wicked Web Child. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And we open right back up where it shut off at last time at the kitchen scene. Where Derek has now revealed that tat on his chest and Hannah now knows that's who raped her and that's who fathered Candace, okay? So she is just... She just all done. She don't know what to say, what to feel. All she know is that her worst of nightmares have just came in her face, and she don't know what to do. Child, we learned that Derek was on them drugs. He was on them drugs, family. He was on them drugs. He said he was on them drugs so hard that he didn't even remember doing that to Hannah. Say he even went to jail that night because he was trying to rob somebody to get some more drugs so he don't even remember her but he's asking her to forgive him that might be a little premature to ask her that right now that 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 might be hannah is so traumatized she just want him to not come any closer to her and just go and right when she was telling him that here comes benny what's going on here Hannah don't want to tell Benny because she already know how Benny going to react. So she don't say anything about that. She just says Derek was about to leave. And he can tell something wrong with his mama, but she ain't coming forth with it. But she done said the words that he been waiting to hear, going to escort him out. So he does that. And afterwards, he's asking her what's going on, what's wrong. She just say, look. Uh, we, we need to call. I need to make a call. We got to get a notary over here to sign that money back over to the criers. And he talking about, the, what about the interest? She said, we ain't asked for that. <laughs> now, over at Justin's, Jeffrey finally get him to put the broken bottle down. And, of course, Justin starts the, I love you. I, you know how much I gave up for you. And Jeffrey, for some reason, is apologizing. Then he told this dude he loved him. See, I don't know what kind of games Jeffrey playing. I don't know if these are some psychology tricks he pulling out of the bag. But in the book of my mind, he's ill prepared to deal with a demon uh, of the magnitude of Justin. Because Veronica still got some type of resolve about herself. This dude here, totally over there. With that, totally over there. Anyway... He tells the man he love him. So Justin hits him with the favorite phrase. Prove it. First he wanted him to spend a night. Jeffrey saying, I got no clothes over him. He begging him to just come on and do it. Well, at least Jeffrey said, how about we just start with dinner? So he going to go fix dinner for them to eat. I said... Ain't no way in hell I eat anything that that boy prepared because we all know that his elevator don't go to the top floor nowhere near it. Mm -mm. He don't even get mad way to the destination point on the elevator. His joke, he that per he the elevator that when you press the button, it don't say nothing, but it ain't got no out of order sign on the door. So I, I can't really understand him. I can't. Justin try, uh, Jeffrey tries to suggest therapy. Now, immediately, he thought that meant they going to couples therapy. No, he wants you to go get some help. And he told him, you need to go get help by yourself. You know, to deal with that obsession situation that you seem to be going through. He, in terms, blames Jeffrey because he is obsessed and has and he loved. It's Jeffrey's fault that he loved him. It's Jeffrey's fault that he um he gave up his family and everything he had for him. And it's Jeffrey's fault that he's obsessed. Sounds like a class A narcissist to me. It ain't never their fault. Everything falls back on you. Child, please. Anyway. Jeffrey sent him in the kitchen eventually to go and start cooking his food. And did y'all see that he had texted somebody? 
I, he either got a text and replied to it, or he takes somebody and then replied back to whatever they said. And I'm under the impression that that is Madison, okay? When Jeffrey, when Justin returned to the area that he was picking up the, Jeffrey was picking up the glass from, which I, I guess that would be the dining area, he asked him, who you texting? The boy said he was texting his father. He want to know why. To check on him. Justin don't want him to do that. Another trait of a narcissist. They try to isolate you from your family and friends. Now over at the hospital, Madison then got a call from David that he needed his bandages changed ASAP. Madison said he'll be right over there, but he didn't know where Jeffrey was because David asked him that too. So then one of his co-workers come along. I think Keisha was her name. And she give, he gives her a what-if scenario. Old girl was able to break that down real fast. She knew exactly what he was talking about. And she was able to identify the fact that if you ever did date women, it was a long time ago. What she told him is this, basically. If you know something that Jeffrey is doing or someone he's around that could possibly cause him harm, why not tell David about it? But both of y'all going to have to understand that Jeffrey is an adult, so the ultimate decision will lie with him. And that's what she told him, right? So he heads on over there to take care of uh, David's uh, bandages and whatnot. Now back at Catherine and Jim's place, he trying to get it through to her head that they going to jail. Catherine, we, we, we going to jail here. Okay, fix me another drink and let that be what it is. She's seemingly unbothered. Then, Jim gets a call from Mitch, letting him know that they got a problem. He said the Malones know that it was Wyatt that attacked my uncle. And uh, if I was you, I'd keep him close to you. But the rest of this we need to talk about face to face. I think I'll ride on over there since I know where you stay at. You know, I was the one that was with Benny the other day when they was down to your house clowning and carrying on. Yeah, that was me. Jim want to know who put a hit on his son. Why do he need to stay close to him? Is it Mama Rose? Nope, somebody else. But I'll let you know more later. Click, hangs up in Jim's face. Now, back at Hannah's place, she trying to reconcile in her mind, finding out that it was Derek who raped her so many years ago and impregnated her. She called Catherine. Did you set me up? Set you up how? Did you know Derek been in jail before? Yeah. But Hannah, he's been working with me for years. And I assume that, you know, based on what I'm seeing, he's working really hard to leave his past in the behind in the behind and do better today so that's why i didn't have a problem with y'all meeting what he went to jail for that you know of armed robbery that's all you know yeah that's all what happened catherine Derrick raped me let me call the police mm -mm, you ain't gotta call no police child it was years ago He's the man that raped me years ago, and he's also Candace's father. <sighs> I had no idea, Hannah. I am so sorry. I'll come right on over there. Now, nah, it's done now. I don't need you to come over here. But you do know that I don't ever want Derek to see Derek again, right? I can totally understand that. That means don't invite, don't, don't have him come to my house no more, Catherine. All right, girl, I ain't going to do it to you. I totally understand. But if you need me, know that I'm just a phone call away. All you got to do is hit me on my hotline bling, and I'll be there for you in a hurry. All right, we good. And let your husband know before we hang up. Y'all money will be back to y'all tomorrow. Let your husband know that. I ain't, I'm not saying shit to Jim. Well... You need to because I need him to leave my boy alone. All right, Catherine, I will do. I mean, all right, Hannah, I'll tell him. And she hangs up. But see, she ain't let it go because that's her friend. She did what I did. Hung up with her. Thring. Oh, you ain't answering, Derek. 
when you get this message, call Catherine Cry, please. Click. By the sound of her voice, he knows she ain't playing. Mm-hmm. Hannah's all kind of discombobulated because she don't know how she's going to be able to tell this man this or nothing like Tell this girl that that's her uh, father or none of that. She know about the rape, but she don't know that Derek is her father. Candace and Charles sitting at that White House uh, with that president and first lady with they, sitting up there looking like wax figures in the face with their fake phony pleasantries. First lady, how did y'all meet? Landon tried to jump in and explain it, but President say, let her do it. So she basically gave him a cute little story. And it's understood that they ain't been knowing each other that long. But it's a little bit first sight from what it appears. So they exchange a couple of more pleasantries. Then it's time to get up and go. President decides to whisper in Candace's ear that she's a hot piece of little black ass, okay? which sold her off to the point where she need to go recuperate in the restroom. So after everybody is ushered out, President says to uh, uh, J uh, Charles, I don't like you, I don't believe in you. And that girl ain't no good look for you. First Lady comes and backs it up. She's sweet, but she's a whore. A bad look. So he's taking her back because... I know he probably used to the fake pleasantries, but for them to just double back and hit him with the real real quick was a little bit alarming. So he ready to go. You got Candace coming out of the restroom as the guests are leaving. They had been sitting at the table smiling in their face the whole time. Two of them battle axes saying, she's cute, but she's not good for him. This country is going to be ran to hell, but at least he's He's knocking off a hot, a hot little piece of ass. And she overhears that. So now she not feeling to be in there either. So it's time to go. But let that be a lesson to some of you who don't know that in real life, them pink people can not be like that. Not all. Not all. Because I, you know the pink people that like me, y'all are okay with me, honey. Y'all would never conduct yourselves so fake and so phony. But understand they don't think that you're not widely accepted they tolerate you but they don't never celebrate you that's all that's all i'm say about that over there david's madison has arrived and he's changing the bandages and whatnot and david tells him to call jeffrey so he do jeffrey don't answer the phone so david say call him for my phone now, he does, and as the phone is ringing from David's phone to Jeffrey, Justin begging him not to answer the call. Went so far as to take his phone and tell him if it's important, he'll call back. So, on David's end, he then says that he feels like his son is with that boy. Madison tried to stay out of it, but David is adamant because Justin is a new type of dangerous, and Madison agrees to it. Then he told him that Justin is the one that tore up my car. That's why I had to catch me an Uber over here. Mm -hmm. So now David want to know where Jeffrey is. Madison ends up saying, look, I don't know where he is. He just told me he was going to meet up with him, and he texted me the number. That's all I know. Hurry up with these bandages. Hurry up with these bandages. You know how we black parents is hurry up. Because we'll walk out of here with that house coat on and them slippers and a bandana wrapped around our head. And we think something wrong with them almighty eggs, okay? So, child, he hurries up, you know, and do what he do. But he also saying he ain't want to get in the middle of it because the last time he told David some stuff about uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey got mad. Jeffrey, David telling him, damn all of that. My boy in danger, okay? So back at the White House, the president and Charles are alone now. That's when the the, the president decides to uh, tell him that he don't like him, nor Candace, and that his party feels that he was only elected by default, meaning he ain't earned nothing. And Miss First Lady agreed with it. Ain't there some mess? So Charles and Candace is ready to get away from these fake phony and uh 
these fake phony uh pink people and they finna get on in the presidential motorcade and gone back about their business but before we tell you about the motorcade ride let's talk a little bit about rj rk going over to veronica's house uh trying to offer himself to her veronica said where is my jewelry he ends up telling her that he tried to get the jewelry back, but it's been sold. She said, oh, well, you're going to jail. He starts to offer himself up. She said, boy, you are bad in bed. You're a kid, and I'm a grown woman. The one thing I did ask you to do, you couldn't do, and that was get, uh, under, get close to my son. So enjoy your last few minutes of freedom as she began to dial the number to the police station to report a burglary. Baby, he was so desperate to do whatever it is that he could do to keep her happy. That nigga went downtown while she's standing there to try to convince her that putting him in jail ain't what she really want to do because he can be more of service to her with his mouth where it was right then. Mm -hmm, that's all I'm going to say about that. She ended up hanging up that phone. Back at the White House, um... We see the president and that white guy. I ain't going to even bother trying to know their name unless I see that they appear a whole lot. But y'all know them, that group of white men and women that were sitting at that table on last episode before the break where they were conjuring up a way to possibly sabotage uh, Charles's presidency. And they had background checked him, found nothing. Background checked Candace, found nothing. But... The lead guy, the one that wants to be the president from what I see, he remembered her because he dated her. Well, he dealt with her when she was in her hooker hole days. Mm -hmm. So he got a vendetta against her, right? He the one told the president to whisper in her ear and call her a, night, a hot piece of black ass. So now they con they conversating they you know they converse conversing I'm sorry no conversate they conversing with one another about what had taken place. Now we learned in that conversation that it's not uncommon for these politicians as we know today, and on this fake uh, reality nighttime soap opera, it ain't uncommon for the politicians to pay for pools. But see, old boy got a problem because Candace got over on him. She took him real fast, so he got a vendetta. So even though President Sam, I don't, it seemed the sad part about it is it seemed like he liked him. Old boy is more determined to bring him down because he's pissed off because he don't feel like he he's a good uh, option for the next president. You can see it's a little issue there with that. He's ambitious and probably nobody was backing him enough for him to even um, run for president. But if he can bring Charles down, expose him and Candace, that'll make the party get behind him and possibly help him be elected into the White House and Charles ousted. Mm, mm, mm. Charlie said that they were, they doing it like that, but that's what he plans on doing. Now in the car, Charles and Candace talking, and she hoping that she didn't embarrass him, and he said no. But he did tell her what the president said, that he didn't like him and, and uh, wants him to fail. They both laugh it off and, and talk about going low or going high. Candace say when they go low, she go lower. president say when they go low, we go high. Then they get into the conversation about her deciding that she will, in fact, accompany him to the White House when he goes to get swear, sworn in and take his place as the next president of these United States. So she can't leave him with them group of hoes like that. Then they talk about getting it on in the motorcade, child, but decided to go on, on to the hotel. Y'all don't need to be trying to do no backseat loving. Girl, you don't know what you up against yet. Charles don't either, but by the uh, preview of next week, it look like Charles is locked and ready. He don't look like he the one to... It look like we gonna meet Chucky this season. We gonna meet Chucky. Because we might already know how bad of a bee Candace can be. But we don't know how crazy Chucky is. We only got a snippet. And what I saw was, he ain't to play with. Mm -mm. He ain't the one. <coughs> now... Finally, family, back over at Justin's house. 
he and Jeffrey sitting down there eating. And I was just confused. Jeffrey is stupid as hell. You is trusting, trusting, trusting. That's why you always getting caught up, caught up, caught up. He is sitting over there eating this boy food when there is a Batman at the door. Not a knock, fam. I said a Batman. It is David. He is screaming on outside, open up this door and calling for his son. Now, for reasons unknown, Jeffrey go hide in the damn bathroom. Even if Justin told you to do that, I wouldn't have done that. No. Uh-uh. You won't go hide in the bathroom and you know this. You just said this boy is deranged. You just said this boy is obsessed. Your daddy just got blowed up by your mama in his car because he was banging uh, a new chick and she couldn't handle that even though she didn't been banging uh, Catherine's daddy, lawyers, and everything else, honey. And Benny Young, let's not forget. You go to the bathroom and this man comes to, opens the door. David barges in because he want to know where his son is. I know he here. And what does Justin do? Further proving that he needs a, a, a 5150 hole on him immediately. Pulls a gun to David's head and says, Breaking and entering. I can shoot you. And it goes off from there. Next week, we're going to see what comes of that. I think Jeff going to come out that bathroom. I ain't certain. But that was the return of the have and have nots. I was pleased at what they gave to us. I hope that you was pleased in what you saw and at this review that I brought to you guys tonight. I don't think I left out a thing. If I did, you all know the conversations can always continue down in that panty section down below. I love to hear from you guys. So, Sound off, child. Um, tomorrow is my date with Ben. I've already explained that to the my new love things. That is a procedure I have every six to eight weeks. It helps me um, deal with having lupus. Uh, it, it's like my um, it's like my magic my magic pill. It just gets put into my body intravenously. So I will be out tomorrow, and because I'm aging. I don't come back from being as quickly as I used to. So I'm projecting that I could possibly pop back in on Friday. But more than likely, it's going to be Saturday. And I'm going to go live from this channel on Saturday and chop it up with you guys a little bit. And love on the mothers who love on me all year long. I want to uh, spend a little time with you and chit chat and love on each other. So we're going to go live from this channel. It'll be probably around 2 or 3 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. <coughs> Excuse me. It'll be around 2 or 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. So I invite each and every one of you to return. This ain't going to be no messy live. See, I want to start. I'm not going to get into these lives like that because it's just simply not who I am. But I do want to... <coughs> <coughs> Y'all know how some get right there. Mm, some right there. Oh, I'm going to the nearest off too. But anyway, I just want to um start interacting with some of y'all more in real time. Um, everybody can't afford Patreon, so I do it a little bit here, but I'll give a lot more over on my Patreon. Um, again, this is Lupus Awareness Month. I hope that each and every one of you, if you don't do nothing but take a moment to pray for us. <coughs> <coughs> Girl, I don't know what's wrong. It's like I'm hiding here, but I had to turn the air off because I'm doing this. But anyway, that's it. That's all. I'll be back Saturday, possibly Friday. I got my day with Ben, so y'all know how they do me sometimes. I have to take a couple days to let this stuff get through my body. But I will see you guys on the next upload. You have a great remainder to your week. See you Saturday. Peace.